All right, this is video number three. Today we're gonna to talk about SiteGround and we're gonna talk about setting up our accounts and checking uh, how to create a new database, how to check our databases right, and how to also um, check our file manager. So let's do the file manager first. I've just logged into SiteGround. Everything I'm gonna work on is in this My Accounts tab. From My Accounts, you're gonna click on the C panel, okay? So you go into the C panel, and in the C panel, you'll notice you have that you can control your domains. Don't please don't touch any of these things. Your auto installers, again, you don't need any of these. Don't need to use any of these tools. You're going to scroll down. And the first thing we're going to look at is the file manager. So when you click on file manager, just take the default and click OK. And it takes you right into a different, a different panel that says um, file manager. You'll notice in here, you'll have your practice folder. I've got two practice folders. I've got public, private, index. I've got a sample. That sample file's the one that you guys get. So let's, there's my index file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually delete a couple of these. So we'll start from scratch. Um, and I'm just gonna hit delete. And all those files are gone. So what you're gonna wanna do it's at this public HTML level. If you click the up one level, it's gonna say, oh, you're in the wrong spot. So go into public HTML. In here, you wanna create a new folder called sample underscore project. Remember, everything has to be lowercase, no spaces, sample underscore project, okay? That is all you need to do with your uh, with your file manager. There's some other cool things in the file manager. For instance, I can come into this index file and I can edit it. Okay. I can also right click and say edit. Okay. I can HTML edit, but I can edit. And in the editor, I can look to see if things have changed. Okay. I can also make edits. Okay. All right. So that's important. So when you go into the sample project and you're looking and saying, why is my files not working? And your directory says it's empty. This is a way for you to go in and actually see if things are being transferred correctly. If this is empty and you're supposed to have files here, or, or if your configuration file that you have in here doesn't have the newest passwords you put in, it means things are not being transferred up correctly. This is a place for you to go and see what your files look like. Again, that's in the C panel. All right, I'm gonna get out of the file manager and now we're gonna go back to, well, notice I deleted this sample project. If I hit enter, it's gonna throw a 404 error because it doesn't know that it's there, okay? I'm gonna leave this up so we can come, come back to it. I'm back to the C panel now. And I'm gonna go down, I was in I was in files, now I'm gonna to go to databases, okay? The two that you need to worry about in databases is this MySQL database and the PHP MyAdmin, okay? In the MySQL database, you can create, the first thing you should do is create a new database. My database, I called it tax. So you come here, I'm gonna call it tax2, okay? And I'm gonna create the database, okay? It says go back. So now I've got my database. I've got a second database called Tax2. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a user. I'm going to call this user Tax2. I'm going to password generate. Copy this password. Now I don't like all the extra uh, extra items that they put in here, as far as these, these little uh, asterisks and and parentheses. So just add some numbers that's a fairly strong password get rid of all the special characters copy it and use that as the password okay Let's create that user and what you'll need you'll what you'll want to do is is create a notepad document and put that password right into that notepad document in fact you'll want to put the user which is my or the database which is Brian M43 tax two, and then you'll want to put the user that you created also, which is the same. Sometimes it's not the same. Sometimes it is. Depends on. So this is going to be Brian M43 underscore tax tax two. Sometimes that's not the case. So I'm going to create that user. I don't need to save that. I'm going to click go back. Now I've made the database. I've made the user, but what I haven't done is I haven't combined the two. So now I come down here and I select my tax2 user and I select my tax2 database and I click add. Now, for those of you that have uh, that are perfectly fine with the database you have, the 
reason why I'm going through this is for this, when you, every single time we create a new project, we're going to want to have a new database. Okay. So what I'm in, what I'm going to click now is I'm going to say, give me all the privileges. So give this user all the privileges to this database. Okay. I'm going to make those changes. I'm going to go back and it's going to say right here that this database has this user and he's privileged. Okay. At that point, my database is set up. If I go back to the cPanel home and now go into my PHP my admin, give it a second, you'll notice I now have two databases. Okay. So I'm going to click on the first one and it's going to take me into the structure. I have a tax table. Okay. I noticed a couple people were not doing this table right. This table is very important. It needs to be called tax, all lowercase, all one word. Some people called it tax form. Some people called it taxes. Okay. It just needs to be called tax. Okay. For right now. Now, if we look at our other table, it's called tax two or our other database is called tax two. It does not have any tables in it. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to create a table. I'm going to call this table tax. And I know it has eight columns. I'm going to click go and I'm going to start creating the columns. The first column needs to always be called ID. It needs to be an int, and you're going to check the AI button. Okay? It's going to pop up this little pop up. Don't touch this pop up. Just click go. Don't add anything to it. Just click go. That's going to become the primary key automatically, and this AI means auto increment. Okay? Now let's go through and finish making the rest of these columns. The next one is going to be user name. Okay. That's camel case. Two words, user name. No spaces, lowercase u. All right. Let's do total wages. Okay. Then taxable income then withholdings. Now I, I think this is one word, so that's why I'm calling it withholdings, taxes, and then this is the money that we're going to owe, and this is the money that we're going to get refunded. Not return, refunded. Okay, return is a, is a keyword in the database. We can't use that word return. We're going to use refund. Now let's go through all of these. This first one should be a var char, and we'll just go ahead and set it to 255. All the next ones should just be decimals. Okay, total wages is a decimal. It, it, these are all just decimals. Taxes is going to be a decimal. Uh, money owed is going to be a decimal. And refund is going to be a decimal. I like to make them 20 comma 2. Okay, and I also like to copy that and just I'm just going to paste it all the way down. And what that does is it sets it to 20, 20 characters long with two decimal places. Okay, that's all I need to do. And I'm going to click save. Now my, now my table is going to be ready to go. Okay. So I have my table built. This is the correct table. And I have my, um, in, in my notepad document, I have all of the information. Let's, let's go ahead and call it the, the database. Uh, we have that, we have the username and the last one is the host, which we know is going to be local host. So we have those four, uh, items. Okay. So this video we covered how to create the database, how to create a user, how to map them together, and then we also created a table when we put all of our required um, columns in that table. In the next video, we're going to talk about making that connection uh, and uploading our files from Sublime.